Hey, don't try what you are about to see at home. We're what you call experts. That's right. We do this for a living. In this episode of Mythbusters, there may be bricks everywhere. A barrel of bricks and the world's unluckiest builder. We gotta go now. Answering nature's call. Oh man, <laughs> <It's> warm. <laughs> On an electrified third rail. Ah, you've got the lights almost full. It's a total disaster. And the eel and the credit card. The ultimate smackdown. Electric Hill's looking at me right in the eye. He goes zap. Knocked backwards off the rail. Oh, that's disgusting. Who are the Mythbusters? Is my missing an eyebrow? Adam Savage. I always enjoyed seeing Adam in pain. Oh! And Jamie Heineman. Jamie wants a big boom. 30 years of special effects experience. Feel kind of sexy. They don't just tell the myths. They put them to the test. This one is the barrel of bricks myth. Oh, this is the one the guy is trying to take bricks off of a roof and the barrel's too heavy and it drags him up, hits him on the way up. Cracks his skull, injures his collarbone, keeps shooting straight up until his, he's about two knuckles deep into the pulley. Of course, the barrel exploded when it hit the ground, losing the load. Then his weight was obviously heavier than the barrel's weight. The barrel goes back up and this guy goes back down. He hits the barrel about halfway down. And I'd even heard that... He, he then let go of the rope, and what was remaining of the barrel came down and hit him. But he survives. Yes. So we're going to replicate this. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. This is a study in physics and bad luck. Victim holds rope, heavy barrel pulls him up. The barrel breaks and loses its load, so the victim falls. Victim lets go of the rope, gravity does the rest. To test this myth, the guys will have to create a building site scaffold 30 feet high. They'll run a rope through a pulley at the top with a 500-pound barrel of bricks on one side and the victim on the other. <laughs> the boys are negotiating the tricky question of who holds the rope. No, stop spinning like this. Roll me into the shop. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to spew. That was evil. <laughs> Looks like another job for Buster, the crash test dummy. First, they need a rope and pulley capable of lifting 500 pounds. This is a roofer's block. So, so if the, you have the, a 500 pound load of bricks and you're pulling that load of bricks 500 pounds on the opposite side, but with the rope, you'll be putting 1,000 pounds of capacity on the block. This is a more traditional rope, it's manila. It's made out of tree fiber. Of course, a little rougher on the hand. Manila rope, that'll hog tie this myth, which just might have some truth to it. So is the myth widely known in the rigging industry? I mean, yeah. a lot of people know about this one? I think so, I think that's, yeah, I, I recall it. I remember hearing the story a couple of times, so it's quite a calamity. Over at the brickyard, Kevin's heard about this one too. I think I may have seen it in a trade magazine uh, where somebody, he had put in a uh, claim to uh, workers' comp or something uh -huh. like that. Truth is stranger than fiction. According to folklorist Heather Joseph Witham, this story regularly pops up in print. It purports to be an accident report. Almost like Wile E. Coyote on one of his adventures. Um, getting hit here, getting hit there, dying here, dying there. Um, for some reason, we, we think that's funny or interesting. It's interesting enough to have the guys testing the rig back at the workshop. Nothing is left to chance. This is serious business. Buster has been fitted with a quick-release hand, so the guys can make him let go of the rope at the right moment. In this myth, precision is everything. 
We get to see what happens when you fall from eight feet. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the quick release failed its first test. Adam, it's a good thing to figure all this out before we get down there with 500 pounds of bricks on the end of that line. I have some ideas about how to fix that. I gotta say, that looks like it hurt. Unfortunately for Buster, there's more to come. <laughs> the quick releases are fine. Oh, how's that feel, sport? Oh, huh? It's time to raise the stakes. Raise them by 30 feet. All right. Jamie and Adam will use their theater rigging experience to help build a scaffold. You got any idea what these are for? Oh, oh, okay. Am I about to feel really, really stupid? Probably. Now that's a floor. The pulley is attached to a crossbar at the top of the scaffold. With 500 pounds in the barrel, plus the counterbalance on the other side, there'll be a thousand pounds of pressure on the rig. Where the pulley is, is actually pulling on the backside of the scaffolding. So in fact, a tremendous amount of force is on two little bolts that are holding the back of the scaffolding up. The guys are also worried about the strength of the barrels. Here's perhaps the critical question. When the barrel supposedly falls, it breaks and lets go of its bricks. Do you think these barrels will do that? Personally, I doubt it. See, I think they'll fall out on the first try. I think it'll shatter. Well, you want to bet? Oh, no. Here we Come go on. again. I got a dollar. <laughs> Here we go. You want to drop some bricks? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Wait a second. <laughs> The empty barrel is raised into position on the pulley and tied onto the fender of Jamie's truck. Latching on. Oh, got it. Buster's quick release hand is attached. Okay. And things start to get dangerous. 500 pounds of bricks will be loaded into the barrel. Everybody keep their eyes on the barrel and keep yourself out of its path. A lot of creaking going on up here. Our main pipe is bending a little bit. If that pipe bends anymore, the whole rig could crash. Back me away from this a little bit. Jamie's got the last bricks in, but they don't know how long the rig will hold. My rope's stretched about uh, maybe five feet. We're down about 20 feet. I'm not even sure, actually, that the pulley's going to stay on that pipe. The uh, pipe's bending. we got to go now. Yeah. Okay? In five. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> the barrel didn't fail. <laughs> I, all right, I owe you a dollar. There you go. No, that's a five. I'll take that. Even with 500 pounds of bricks falling from 20 feet, the barrel stays intact. The barrel is supposed to spill the bricks, fly back up to the pulley, then fall when the rope is released. Instead, Buster is left hanging. <laughs> so far, everything seems to be spot on. The, uh, the amount of weight in the barrel is certainly enough to really launch this guy. It was violent. It made him sling into the barrel. It whipped him around all over the place. And you know, we just need to get the, the whole thing timed just right. It's not only timing. They have to strengthen the rig by putting in a second pipe to share the load. I think we should just try it again with this barrel. I'm not even sure it'll hold 500 pounds. Jamie's gambling that it's still pretty strong. In fact, he's taking off some of the steel reinforcing bands. He's not convinced that even if the bottom falls out, that the bricks would come out because the barrel has got a shape like this and they think the bricks would wedge in. I think it's totally wrong. They'll soon know who's right. 
The rig is holding and ready to go. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Damn barrel! It didn't do squat! What is this? This barrel is too damn strong. I, I, you know what? I was right. All right, you were right. This 2,000-year-old technology is proving a tough nut to crack. Unexpectedly, the problem isn't the bottom, but the sides. You know, I'm starting to believe that the myth didn't happen because of the nature of the taper and these steel bands that are on it, it just doesn't want to let go of those bricks. A board in the drop zone will make for a rougher landing. But Adam's confidence is shot. I've been wrong every other time, so I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. They've taken off so many rings, they're not even sure it will hold the bricks weight. Okay, remember Adam, it may be bricks everywhere. So far, so good. You've got that knife blade of a board down there. I don't know what that's gonna do. You don't know what it's going to do? <laughs> it's going to wreck the barrel for us. In five, four, three, two. <laughs> it worked perfectly. <laughs> that was fun. That was really cool. I mean, it went up, it went down, it went up, it went down. It's like the dummy getting beaten every which way on the, all through the whole process. It was, that was hysterical. Best of all, they finally managed to break the barrel. The board did the trick. But what does it mean for the myth? Just the fact that we were able to get what we got uh, is, is uh, I believe, very strong proof that it was conceivable. But, alas, not true. Well, in the case of this particular story, it was printed in a 1918 joke book. So it seems that it may have started as the brainchild of one person. A joke, maybe. But Adam and Jamie have proved the barrel of bricks myth is possible. And if it's funny once, twice should be hilarious. Have a seat there, buddy. Your life's about to get really hard. Three, two, one. <laughs> Buster is busted. He was designed for testing inside a car with seat belts. Smashing unprotected into the barrel was just too much. We broke a crash test dummy, man. I think that's a red letter day. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Will urinating on the third rail have shocking results? Find out next. <laughs> it's late. You've had a few drinks. There's no train expected. Nature's calling. What could possibly go wrong? Where are we? We're here at the Golden Gate Railway Museum in San Francisco, and we're testing the myth about peeing on the third rail. Oh, this is the one guy found himself late at night in a train yard, peed on the third rail, the electrified rail, got electrocuted and died? That's the one. Some subway systems are powered by an electrified rail on the track. A steel paddle slides along the top of that third rail, arcing as it draws current. There's enough power in the New York subway to light the whole state of Vermont. Rob Lobenstein is the superintendent of that system. He's well aware of this myth. My first day on the job, they give you all the safety tips and the warnings, and that's the very first thing they tell you not to do. To test this myth, they'll need to make a stunt dummy with the same electrical properties as a human body. They'll have to come up with a system to make it pee. Electrified.